Okay, cool. So, uh, so why, why I'm here. So I wanted to go over my story a little bit to explain kind of how I got here. Well, everyone knows Sam's story, and he goes out his first day, sells five, he knocks for curbs, and he does really well, and all that kind of stuff. My story's a little bit different. I started into door-to-door -door sales, and, I, and it wasn't too well. Um, technically, my first time trying to make money door-to-door -door wasn't well, but the first time knocking doors was actually when I was nine. I, uh, me and my buddy, we loved making fires. Who was a young kid, like, boys, fire, right? Yeah. Who else did fires? Yes, exactly. So what happens, uh, we had a, a spray paint cans. They're very flammable. Um, so we were lighting them on fire. We only had one. And we thought, oh, we should just go ask the neighborhood if they have extras. So we went around and knocked doors to get spray cans to start on fire. And we got the police, or the fire department called on us after a full spray can was punctured and the flame went over a fence and the neighbors called. So it was, it, it was, it was very, uh, it was, that was my first time knocking doors. So I realized that at that point, if you want something bad enough, you'll go out and get it. So fast forwarding, do we have the slides down? Okay, now it's working. Okay, cool, so this was, which one? Okay, cool. So first time I actually made real money, who knows what these are? Anybody ever have one of those? They were super big in like 2009 or something. They came out, those balance bracelets. You put them on, you'd like do these tests, and you could like be amazing. So retail price, 35 bucks. China price, 99 cents, okay? So me, as a junior in high school, I bought like 150 of these, and we made a ton of money because everybody, and I could make different colors and branding. So that was the first time I realized that, like making money and doing that that way was like, oh, I love being an entrepreneur. I don't think going to school or, you know what I mean, having a desk job is really my thing. Um, next slide. I don't think this is working. This one's not that one. This one's something else. So I graduated from a, two th I graduated from a school uh, that was 48 people in my class and I went straight to knocking doors. Some family convinced me to go knock doors out in Bentonville, Arkansas. Who's been to Arkansas for sales? All right, there we go. So I went out to Arkansas, uh, 30 hour bus ride on a Greyhound. That's not the way to do it. Um, once we got out there though, uh, it was just, it was like, hey, just go out and learn. It wasn't, there wasn't any support, nothing like that. So I went there, I did terrible for my first year of sales. Actually my first two years, I should have probably quit, but luckily I didn't and we persevered. So that's kind of how we got here today. Um, with Sam, I partnered up with Sam when I was uh, interested in joining his team. And when I joined up with him, it was almost like it was a drug deal because he was super quiet and he's like asking all these weird questions. And that's when he told me he wasn't gonna do alarms anymore and he was switching to solar. And I was like the first person he ever told. So we go from there, I started solar with Sam, we did really well here in Utah, and then he had this vision about creating door-to-door -door con, and I told him I was in, and I'd do whatever it takes to kind of get there. So from then on, um, that's kind of how we got here, that's my story, and I wanted to talk about the three main principles that I had learned along that way. And what we discovered, I don't think any of these are working, perfect. This is the title, Ghost of Summer's Past is what we're gonna be talking about. Like Charles Dickens, right? Everyone knows, like Scrooge, and he has these like ghosts of Christmas past and whatnot. So we have ghosts of summer's past. And the first law, so there's three laws to them. Everyone knows this story, you should at least. Um, and there's different ways that we want to stay away from these ghosts, either from becoming one ourselves or creating one. And so these are the three laws that we can go over that'll actually help us do that. Next slide. So the first law is the law of leading yourself. So when it comes to um, when it comes to leading yourself, sorry, these are like all. Let's see. It's from pulling people. It's pull, you have to be on higher ground in order to pull, pull people up, right? Everybody knows that. So when it comes to getting people to higher ground, as long as you're at a higher place, you can help them. So you have to be committed to your own learning. If you don't know your own learning, if you can't commit to actually focusing on yourself rather than giving it to somebody else, saying, hey, you teach me, let me see what you, have to, you know, what you have learned so that I can go. It's so much more important to decide, hey, you know what, I'm gonna do this myself. I'm gonna learn from self-study, from growth, from learning from other people, and I'm gonna take that personally. I'm not gonna rely on other people to do that, right? 
So there are a couple of different, obviously, everyone should know there's different resources that you can reach out to personally for, obviously, door-to-door -door con. That's why you're here. But we also have uh, any other personal seminars, group coaching, audio books, and books. That's where I started. Um, my story of starting out in door-to-door -door sales for the first year and a half, it was 42 weeks until I actually decided to actually pick up a book and read. Because I kind of like went through high school, I was good at what I did, I got good grades, was good at sports and whatnot. And then it came down to it and I was like, oh man, I'm not making any money doing this. And I had a cousin that did so much better and I was like, what are you even doing? And he's just like, I'm just doing what they tell me to. And I guess the only thing that I wasn't doing that he was, was reading books. So I picked up my first book by Brian Tracy, The Art of Closing a Sale, who's read that? That book changed my life. Um, I read that and I actually started applying the principles. I started actually, I decided to say, hey, you know what, instead of just working from, you know, let's say one to nine during the summer, I decided, you know what, I'm out here for the whole summer, I'm not with family, I'm not with friends, I'm not doing anything like that, so why not decide to say, hey, I don't work from one to nine, I work from, you know, 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. every day. It's all 24 hours, right? So I decided to wake up early, start reading, get ready for the day, go out and sell, and I did that multiple times and I started seeing results. So when I decided to apply this law of leading yourself first and actually taking the priority of doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I saw the success. Um, next one. This is the quote I made. It's actually pretty sweet. So wisdom is the intelligence you gain after years of neglect, whereas self-improvement is the tool to find enlightenment. Enlightenment is intelligence, genius, and action-oriented, where wisdom is long-suffering and time-oriented. So people say, you know, older people are like, hey, you, know, you don't have any wisdom, you're not wise. I think being wise is neglecting self-improvement, right? I'd rather be young and being self-improved and enlightened rather than having to spend a bunch of time to learn and wait till I'm you know, 40 years old or 50 or 60 to be able to be like, hey, I know what I should do. You should be doing this. Here's some advice. So we can fast forward by actually just having the right kind of leadership and leading ourselves, okay? Decide which path you're on and understand how you're gonna go out doing it. Do you wanna spend five years to get to where you wanna be because you are focused on learning through wisdom and through trial and error and you just have to sit there and learn yourself or do you actually just wanna learn quickly by learning from others and, uh, and people that are uh, farther along the path than yourself. The second law is finding powerful leadership. So you gotta lead yourself first and decide that you're committed to it, and then you have to be committed to finding an environment that supports your new identity, right? So with the, uh, yeah, so it's, okay. Yeah, yeah, I just, I think these ones are the ones that we're trying to, okay. So then, um, Finding the right leaders to push you is super important. And that's what I found in Sam, which is really cool. Um, I was at a great leadership before, but at the same time, they, were, they plateaued. And there's no way that you can kind of jump ahead of your leader unless you find an outside source. So my, I would recommend anybody out here that has felt like they've been plateaued or they're kind of at a point or they don't see growth from their management, that's your job to find outside leadership to do that, okay? So once I found the right leaders for me, I saw exponential growth. I saw that in Sam when I switched to solar. And then we also found it when we started investing in personal coaching, which is actually a huge reason why this came about, this whole event. Um, so creating change is important. And to do so, you have to do a personal level, and then you have to do it on an environmental level. If you combine the two, if you're like, hey, I'm gonna change personally, and I'm gonna change my environment, that's when you get the most drastic results. But it's really scary, especially to change your environment, because you might have to say goodbye to some friends, you might have to say goodbye to some habits. Um, and so in order to change those kind of things uh, requires a lot of personal uh, perseverance and, uh, and it can be really tough. So when it comes to uh, the third law is improving others' lives. So then you go from leading yourself, you finding the right leadership that can also support that environment, and then you go to lead other people. So the growth and opportunity from knocking doors is something that you should take really personally as a leader. If you're someone that's leading somebody else, just know that this is the best opportunity, I believe, for people of this day and age to be able to take advantage of everything the world has. You're able to go out there, make your own income, go out and set up your own time frame, start your own businesses, you're not tied down to these cubicles in five to nine. So as a leader of salespeople, or as maybe a future leader, you should take that super seriously. And as soon as you realize that that is like the way it's gonna be and that's the perspective you have to have, 
you're going to be able to take your leadership to another level. So when it comes to um, when it comes to anybody that's knocking doors, when you create ghosts of summer's past, it really comes from not leading yourself. The people that don't lead themselves will turn into those ghosts that could have been. The people that d decide to change themselves but they can't find like a uh, they can't find the right environment that supports them, they'll continue to struggle because they'll get they'll work really hard and get to a certain place and then they don't find an environment that supports it, so they can't maintain it, which gets exhausting and they'll eventually become a ghost of summer's past. And then with this one, by not finding, by not being a leader that leads people at these laws and principles, you end up creating people, they're bringing on new reps, and then they don't have the opportunity to learn from somebody that's actually gonna keep them on, and so they're a ghost of what could have been during the summer. So my recommendation to you is to make sure you take away the principles to first learn, for, learn from yourself. Take your education seriously. No one else is gonna do it for you. Read the books, ask the questions. Like, there's so many resources, Sam and myself, all of our team here. We're all supporting you. We don't have an agenda like recruit or anything. So it's just like, cool, you can ask me if you feel like you're like wondering what's the next step. Maybe you're scared to ask your manager because they won't have the right answers or they'll be offended or you don't know if their answers are correct. So it's like bounce ideas off each other, bounce ideas off of those that can lead you, um, and find out how to make sure that you're not either creating other people that could have been so much better during the summer, and that you're not becoming one of those people as well. Because I can't even imagine how many more people we'd have here, or that would be millionaires, politicians, leaders in their own respects, um, out there doing what they love, if they had the right leadership and they applied the laws the right way. Um, Last one, sorry, this can go way past. <laughs> cool, so to recap on it, first law is leading yourself. Second law, second law is the law of seeking, so finding powerful leadership. And then your third law is gonna be becoming a powerful leader. So if you can take these away, and apply them, please reach out to leaders, let us know how we can help you out. And I promise you'll be able to be more successful because door-to-door is the opportunity that everyone is looking for. Thank you. Yeah.